Hey, good afternoon. This is Rich from Wicked Hitch. We're going to go ahead with the install of the Wicked Hitch system in the new 2017 SLR. So we'll see what surprises that's going to hold for us. When your hitch system arrives, it, these will be the components you get. Hitch frame, receiver, drop hitch, and then all the bolts and couplers and a little PVC uh, wear spacer. Okay, Tools you will need, I recommend going online, download the instructions. It takes you through the process step by step. They were written by a professional educator, by the way. So I think you will be impressed. I would follow these step by step. I uh, list all the tools you need and basically here's all I need to install that hitch. Um, the biggest thing is a roto zip or a router. You could use a Dremel tool. But we'll, some people do it by hand. I've seen them do it with a knife, actually, and that's when we cut the slot in the underbody panel. Okay, so I'm gonna set up and we'll go through the install. The 2017 SLR. This is new. We haven't dealt with that. I don't even know what a BLA module is. It must have something to do with the, with the brake light. The brake light connects into that. So who knows? No idea. But we're gonna have to work around it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the seatbelt retractor. You can see we have this one taped up. So Eric's gonna work it through that slot. I'm going to pull up some slack on it and you're going to wrap that up. Believe me, that's something you want to do because when they retract, it's like solving a Rubik's Cube trying to get slack into those units again. Okay, so we've got the seat belts taped up with some slack. He's going to take out the, the 15 millimeter stock bolts and the 15 millimeter half inch drive socket. And those are going to be replaced with the bolts that come with your hitch. We, we went to a grade 10 bolt and it's a little bit longer. I would use the impact driver, but you know, I'm older and wiser. Okay, and we're just gonna leave those seat belt retractors exactly where they sit. Okay, we're going to put the little PVC uh, protective ring on. I don't have this one labeled. It clips on in place. I'm going to set that hitch in place, and I'll show you the issue we have to deal with. And this may be something we change in manufacturing, but I hate to do it. But if you look back here in the back, that brand new surprise module, whatever it is, is right in the way of the receiver. So we are going to have to... Uh, adjust that. One other thing to look at is where the seat belt bracket holes, can you see that hole Maggie? If they're not lining up what you do is you set the hitch frame on the, on the floor, set it on a blanket or something, you can spread spread those apart or push them together. Just has to do with contraction from the welding process. So we're going to pull it out, we're going to pull this uh, module off and we'll show you how to fix that. Just relocate that module I had an adjustable wrench available. I saw it had a little pin to kind of hold it, keep it from turning. So he's going to pull that lock nut off of there. And we'll figure out where to move it here in a minute. So he's going to go ahead and pull it out. That surprised us. So we're actually going to, uh, to cut it out. Okay. You can see where we've cut this side, maybe. Can you see that? This is so thin that it's just like a piece of tin foil. So Eric's gonna go ahead and show you how he cut it. So we have a hacksaw and you might have to make shift to handle. So we use that handheld one for that one. And now he's gonna cut the other tab off. And there it goes. 
toes. Now these edges are really sharp. So I'm gonna take a file and I'm just gonna file those down. Okay, now we're back to what a 2015, 2016 slingshot looks like. Okay, we're gonna pre-fit the hitch again and see if we have enough clearance now. That bracket back there, and as you can see, we have plenty of clearance, so we're good to go on with the install. I'm place the two U-bolts on this front frame member, the tubular frame. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine on first. Make sure you don't get any wires caught in there. If you drop any parts down here, you have to take all this apart to get to them. So be very careful you don't drop parts. I'm gonna put one nut on here, just to kind of hold things in place. I'm gonna slide this all the way to the left. Okay, and Eric's gonna put the, the one that goes on above the fuel pump, and he's not going to and then you're just going to rotate it and kind of leave it right there. The fuel pump will keep it from sliding down. Okay. I'll trade the spots. Well, no, you can go. You can go around for this. Oh, don't forget this wear ring. Clip it in place. You don't want to be scratching that beautiful powder coat. Gosh, all right, which way that go? It goes that way. Okay. Gonna slide the hitch in place. We're gonna work on this side first. And I'm gonna put one nut on loosely. I'm gonna come over and get the other one in place. And this is a tricky part. Have someone here to help you. Take off that nut. Slide it underneath. That hitch is gonna slide down. Oh. That's a tricky part. And he's just gonna lift it up and put the other two nuts on. Everything's hand tight and we'll try to kind of even them up. So now the problem I'm having is I can't get this down. Can you see those okay, Maggie? Mm -hmm. I can't get this down. So this is where you want to use some of your adjustment. That's going up. So I'm going to come the other way and give myself some room to work with. Okay. And we're going to put these grade 10 bolts in with a washer on. Let Eric get one side going. And then I'm gonna get my side going, get that lined up. Here's where, like I said, these will flex. So if you need to, you can flex them a little bit. We try to, before we ship them, we try to. And you don't wanna strip these bolts out. But if, if you do, when we ship it, we give you a lock nut to go underneath so you can drill it out and at least uh, not be stuck. And when we took off these roll hoop covers, we heard something drop. And it was, we found, we heard it drop off of each side. So it's this little washer we were lucky enough to find. And it fits inside. If Eric pulls that apart, we're just not sure where it goes exactly. You guys will have to remember when you take it apart, it's going to fit inside in one of those locations or here. I think it came from the inside on each hoop. We'll figure it out when we put it together, but we're going to probably glue those in place once we figure it out. We're going to have to, so I don't know how else you're going to get it in there. Okay, we're going to mask off the Underbody cover, a little bit over halfway. You see this indentation right here, and then the hole right there? Those are our reference points. So 
So here we're laying out the slot so the receiver can come through up underneath. Shows you where to mark it in the instructions here. Three eighths wide. Take your ruler, go eight and a quarter long. From side to side, eight and a quarter. And then just lay out your rectangle. This area here is what you're going to be removing with the roto zip. So we got our uh, roto zip ready to go. Eric's, Eric's all practiced up with it. He says he can do it, no problem. So he's got safety glasses on. I've got mine on. Our filmer even has safety glasses on. So safety first. Go ahead and show me how to cut that, Eric. I'll hold it for you. that piece out we're just gonna leave the tape on it we can take a file but we're we're gonna we're probably gonna end up cutting this because if you want to get into the back and you don't cut it you got to take everything off the slingshot again if we cut this if we cut this here we'll put a couple little holes in to attach it to the other panel. We'll supply those clips in our kits. I think you'll like that option. That way you can just flex it, slide this whole piece out. So that'll be the plan. I made up my mind. I don't want to have to take off the whole deck again. So I'm just going to cut a slot all the way through with my hacksaw. Here we go. So, like I said, when we go to put it in now, we just flex it, slide it up against the receiver, or pull it out. We don't have to take anything apart. We're going to drill two holes on each side later, and we'll use those push pins to hold that in, in place and hold it together. So, that's something new also. Okay, we're going to put this rear underbody panel back in place. couple of the T40s back in. So this one's right here and I'm putting those in by hand with a screwdriver. I'm just snugging them up. I guess we only need to put three screws in, huh? There you go. Okay. We may not have to take that out. I can't remember at this point. Been a long winter. Okay, you can cut okay. that. Yeah, Eric's gonna slide the receiver up into position through that underbody panel. Go ahead. Okay, he's got it in position. He's gonna have to slide it back. Get those holes lined up. Can you see it? Yeah, we gotta cut the slot bigger. Do you? Okay. And we found this out before. If you can see where it's rubbing right there, we're gonna actually have to cut that slot just a little bit bigger. For some odd reason. Almost. Yeah. Almost all the way to the end. Almost almost all the way. All the way to the aluminum. There we go. Okay, we're gonna slide this 
slide the receiver up in there now. Get those bolts lined up. I'll get one in for him. Put the other one in. So we had a washer on the other side, a washer on this side, and then the lock nuts. And I'm going to get him the two wrenches to tighten that down with. A socket fits on the back side though. So do that one with a socket. Yeah, 13 sixteenths half inch drive socket on the head of the bolt, and then a 7 8 inch open end box end wrench on the nut. He's actually going to torque those down as tight as they will go. I think it's something like 55 foot pounds of torque. Fifty-five, sixty, same torque as the roll bars. Those ratchet drive uh, wrenches, those gear wrenches are amazing. So again, he's, he's got a seven eighths inch wrench on the lock nut and a 13 16 wrench on the head. Sorry we did that to you, but hey, you don't have to buy an extra wrench if you have a full set. Tight as he can go. Whoop. Yeah. Like that bolt. Oh, it's a gear, yeah. So we'll switch to regular. The guy's so strong he broke the freaking wrench. We'll see if that craftsman warranty is any good. got to be 60 foot pounds of torque yeah okay go ahead okay we're actually going to use a drop hitch to align everything because you know with the welding process and you got one of the welders holding it right there we want it to be lined up with a drop hitch in place so he's going to go ahead and insert it he'll put the pin in it then he's going to get behind we'll actually have the camera move behind and we're going to line that up, I mean, right behind it with the camera. And you can see how as I move this, the whole hitch frame will move. I'm hitting on a little bit of plastic, but what's that look like, you guys? That look pretty good there? Right with that metal tread. That looks good to me. Cut. Okay, we're gonna snug down. We're gonna snug everything down. Just, just basically snug first, and we're gonna keep checking the alignment of the hitch. Hit those. He's gonna snug up these four. One about the same amount of threads showing on each one. I'm gonna get behind. I'm just gonna make sure everything looks looks good and straight. They look perfect. And now he's going to swap things out. He's going to put the half inch drive socket on. He's going to tighten things down. Not going to scratch the paint. And he remembers what the torque setting was on those. They weren't as tight as you think, which surprised me, but we went up to a grade 10 bolt anyway. We said the torque setting on those is about 40 foot pounds. Now he's going to switch sockets and go to the front um, U bolts. And the seat belts, it says 40 to 50 foot pounds, the four U bolts to about 30 to 35 foot pounds. So I'll go grab a torque wrench while he's pulling that. There you go, old school, old school torque wrench. Yeah, with a moving handle. 
So again, those, the seat belt retractor bolts, 40 to 50 foot pounds. Where are you at? 50. 50? Yeah, don't go over 50. And then again, the U bolts between 30 and 35. Careful of those old school wrenches that you notice how he's not holding that bar. And I've had guys they've wrapped the they've wrapped tape around everything to protect it, friction tape. And old my buddy George Brionis. He uh, put some pads in here, some spacer pads. Um, he uh, went crazy just protecting the frame and every every other component so there you have it installation is complete except for our adjustment up and down and then locking these jam nuts so that's the last thing we're going to show you okay i just set my ball in place we want to go 16 inches to the center of the ball that's for the trailer i'm hauling and we're going to make that adjustment using that that uh, truss rod so Eric's going to get set up. We're going to come down. And you can see it comes down. 16 and a half. We'll come down a little bit more. One more half a turn right there. 16 inches to the center of the ball. And the most critical thing now. Tighten those jam nuts and lock them in place. I mean, nothing's going to happen really if they come loose, but we want to lock them both in place. He's just going about 25 foot pounds of torque. Remember, one's left hand threaded. So I think that one, that would be left hand threaded, right? And this one's a right hand thread. Okay. Okay, we are uh, going to put two of the plastic push pins in, body clips. Eric's kind of laid out the location. I don't know if you can see it quite, quite good, but he's drilling through from underneath. Where is he? There it is. You can see that. All right. Here's what we're putting in, just a plastic... Uh, body clip we'll show you how those go in without a second so they can see it okay so there's the holes and he's going to go ahead and push that pin up through and i'll flip to the top side maybe you can see that and he put it through and pop the pin in and that secured that panel now he's going to go ahead and put in the other side I'll just sit up top, as you can see a pretty good view of that from right here. And we will remember to supply those to you in the kit. There you go, hole number two. Pin is in. Put the push piece in. And it's locked in place. They should put those in its factory, actually. That is an improvement. A little bit of silicone, maybe, and we're good to go. So, with those pins in place, that concludes the installation of the Wicked Hitch frame, receiver, and drop hitch.
Next step would be to put in my wiring harness. And we'll try to shoot a video of that. I don't have one for this one yet. But um, that completes your hitch installed. You're ready to pull. And just a couple things, I'll jump up on there. You'll see that flex a little bit. Again, uh, what I say, 600 pounds towing capacity with the drop hitch, about 75 pounds of tongue weight max. If we pull this out and we hook up up here, you can haul about 1,200 pounds and you can double the, the tongue weight, over 120 pounds. Okay, so that's a wicked hitch install. Thank you for watching.